I'm Becca and welcome to my channel. Today I was wondering if you ever got all these cane ends and scrap pieces of clay, if you've been doing caning or beads and things like that and thought what do I do with all of this instead of just turning it into muddy clay. So as you can see I've got it separated out into different colours. Now I've done quite a lot of work with it already but I set myself a, a, a target to try and get as much out of it as I possibly could. I've already done quite a bit and that's in the video today but I'm going to be doing a second one because as you can see I've still got a lot left. Uh, all I'm using is just the things that you can see on this tray and then uh, I might use some uh, plain coloured clay just to outline and things like that but I'll show you as we're going along. So uh, if you've got uh, plenty of scrap uh, clay and you want to know what to do with it here's what to do. So uh, let me show you how. Right, so here's my uh, tray of scraps. Uh, I'm going to have a few more to add to it because I've got a, a couple of canes on the go at the minute and when I've uh, finished reducing them, I'll pop them on the tray and I'll show you. But as you can see, I've been playing a lot and I've got lots of cane ends and bits and pieces that are just left over from the ends. They've got lovely patterns in them, but what do you do with them? So I'm going to show you different things that I do with my uh, scrap pieces. Uh, I'll just show you quickly what we're going through right now. I've set myself a challenge to try and get as many beads out of this as I possibly can. So I might have pulled all my hair out by the end of it. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one and then we'll uh, start with the process. So we'll go with... Uh, let's see, I'm spoiled for choice now. Let's go with this one. So we've got... These are just the uh, end bits from me reducing it down to use part of it and then these are the pieces that have come off so right, zoom in and then you can see what I'm doing better so I think what I'll do because this one's already chopped up and squished together um, I'm just trying to find my acrylic block there we go. so all I've done with this one is I've just chopped it all up and uh, made it into random chunky pieces when I've been doing it and then I've just used the acrylic block just to squash it down um, this one is quite well not old but it's a few weeks old so it's going to take a little bit of waking up for me to be able to do what I'm wanting to do with it but it's just a case of waking it back up and squidging out all the air pockets and then I'm going to make some lentil beads so these ones, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna make one big lentil bead with just these ones, and then uh, decorate it with uh, some slices. So I'm just gonna take, take it into a, a log. Okay. So I'm gonna have a look there. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna want the whole thing for lentil beads. So I'll chop it in half. I'll save that to do something else with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to reduce this down into a log that's probably about um, half an inch wide. So I'll go and do that off camera because you don't want to see me rolling uh, this for about five minutes. So I'll be back in a second. Now I've got this reduced down and as I've been rolling it I've just twisted it just so that it spreads the uh, colours out all the way through the, the log. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to divide it up into little sections and this is um, a marketing tool that I learned how to make from uh, Susan of Turtle Soup Beads. I'll link her Patreon in the uh, uh, description box so that you can uh, watch her tutorial on uh, how she makes them. So I'm just going to press this down. So as you can see there you've got nice little notches of where you need to cut your cake. Well, cut your log and then all you need is your lid if it doesn't go walking. So, take that bit off and then we've got a fresh end. So, then you just want to chop them. And now, this is where the magic happens. So, we've just got these little bits here, I've just got all the different colours in. Just want to turn it into a ball. and that'll wake it up the clay a little bit more and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my acrylic block 
and I'm just going to swirl it on my mat. This is a glass mat that I'm working on as well, so I'll, uh, that helps a lot. And I'm just going round and round in circles, but I've got my uh, acrylic block at an angle. So rather than it being completely straight, I've sort of like I'm tilting it a little bit. And I've lifted it up now and then I want to start again. Never mind. And then you just keep going and it and it makes this little sort of bicone shape once you get it going. I haven't made any in a while, but once you've made uh, like a hundred of them, you can do it when you're not even looking. And then if you want to sort of control how much swirl you get in it with the acrylic block you can see through it so you can just see how much of a twist you want in your bead and I'm just going round and now I'm just moving my acrylic block I'm just about getting there going up yep and then you just want to push down on the top and it flattens it out now that's only got a little swirl but if you're not happy with it squish it back up and uh, just redo it so I'm gonna do these off camera because you don't want to watch me uh, doing all of them but I'll do one more with you and then uh, you might get a better swirl with this one you can always uh, separate your full swirls to your part swirls and uh, use them in different pieces if you like. So, go in there again and just try and put a nice even pressure on it. Excuse my noisy neighbours, they're deciding to cut wood. <laughs> I'm not right sure what's going on, so apologies if you can hear it in the background. I remember when I first started doing these beads, it took me ages to get it down. And I, I swore at them, I'll tell you now, <laughs> I swore at them, like, why aren't you working? So. It will take some practice and like I said I've not made some of these in quite a while so it's getting my hands back into the uh, rhythm of it. So I think we're getting it now. If you sort of just tilt your acrylic block and then just push down. There we go. And that's a little bit better as well than uh, we got in the other one. And you can see the gold bits are uh, just the gold leaf that's uh, flaked off from the, uh, you know, what we've rolled out. So I'll go and do the rest of those off camera and I'll be back in a second. Right, so I've got all my uh, lentils made. So you can see how many of the small ones that I've made. And then I've got two large ones that I'm going to show you where, what I do different things with. So I'm going to take these off the tile. Put them over here. I'm just going to take my acrylic block to show you where the first one was. Uh, I find it easier to move things around. Now, at the minute, this is just like a normal lentil bead. It's done on both sides. But what I like to do is pop it down there, and then I just take a piece of plastic from what you get left over from greetings cards or cereal packets, something like that, and then I'm pushing down on the sides. So I'm turning it into more of a dome that's got flat back rather than domed on both sides. The reason I do this is, is because I like to bead around them. 
So having this as an option for when I want to use it. I can still use it as a normal bead if I wanted to. But having it like this I can uh, bead around it because it's got the flatter back so I can um, the bead embroidery with it. And just move it around and then you can just take this is just a gift card that I've in paper, another trick I picked up from Susan. And I'm just going around the sides just to smooth it out. The other thing you can do is if you've got some circle cutters. and if you try not to get it on the top bit if you do just small amount like that no worries Whoop. and I think that's just about done oh sorry I've gone off camera then there we go so as you can see take it no longer domed on both sides, we've got a flat back uh, lentil bead now. So I'll show you the other thing and I'm going to turn this one into a heart. So if you've watched my other video that's got the um, decoupage hearts in, it's the same sort of shaping process as that, you're just using a lentil bead instead. So I'm going to take one side and I'm just going to pinch it at the bottom. Again, use your gift card. I just want to give it that point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the gift card and I'm just going to push it down in the centre here. So we get that little V. Again, just get your plastic and can smooth it out. Just get it how you want it to be in the end. I like to take the sharpness off as well, I like to have them smooth my heart. Make sure it's even on both sides because if you're going to be using this as a pen on its own, if it uh, turns around, you want it to uh, be finished on both sides. Yeah. And we've got our lentil hat. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate these with some cane. So, this is just all a tray of my canes that have already been reduced so I've just brought them out and I'm just going to decorate these up so <coughs> I think I'll go for it some, but I've got this really thin leaf here I'm going to cut that and I'm going to go around my heart with that one This is a fairly old cane sort that. It's probably why that end one didn't want to come out. So I'm just going to take some slices and if I can find my uh, needle tool, no, I'll do go with this one. Hold it up in a minute so that it's easier for you to see. I'm going to overlap them. And 
this sort of frames the swirl in the centre by doing this. <coughs> Excuse me. Because this is a fairly old cane and dry, I'll probably go over it with some um, liquid clay before I bake it just to make sure that it's all stuck down. And then, what shall we put on there? And we'll just do one more of those. Because it's got that nice swirl in the centre, you don't need to add all that much. This is just a way to frame it. But you don't have to do that, you can just leave it as the uh, lentil heart if you wanted. See those with the uh, little cracks, uh, if you put the liquid clay on top it'll fill those in so you don't need to worry about those. Always uh, smooth my for uh, the uh, needle. Just do, let's say if you've got your little crack there, just go over it. Just with something round, and then you can push your leaves down in the centre as well. Okay, so that's framed the heart. Now with the round one, we can do exactly the same, but we'll use a different cane. Right, so we'll go and take our little leaf cane. Just get that out of <coughs> fresh cut. And when I'm cutting these ones, I like to alternate them round as to which way I cut them on the uh, glass mat, just to keep <coughs> the cane even and to try and stop from distortion. If you're doing one of these, if you uh, realise that your cane's getting a bit too pointed for what you like, just pull it onto its uh, rounded side and then cut down from the point so that it rounds it a little bit more back out. So when you're doing your cuts, it just gives that roundness back to it. Now with this one, I'll probably just go all in one direction. So, course this is going to be. Oh, it's broke. Put another one on. I put it on the edge because it's going to be for bead embroidery or something. And I'm just going to overlap the leaves. And I'll do that all the way around until I get back to the start. So I'll carry on doing this off the uh, screen, you don't need to see me doing all of this. And I will do the back of the heart in the same way that I've done the front. And then I'll come back and I'll show you uh, what else I'm going to do. Okay, so the rest of that uh, block that I got of the uh, same ones that we've just made all the uh, lentil beads with, I'm just started rolling it out <coughs> and I'm going to make some beads using my bead roller. Now this is one of the um, proper clay bead rollers that I've got. I think it was a female one or something. I got it when I first started out. Um, using clay but then I've got this one as well which again this is another thing that Susan's uh, made as a tutorial and this this makes bigger uh, barrel beads and this didn't really cost anything at all it's an empty bottle so again if you check out her patreon then she's uh, got the video on how to make your own of these 
and they're just really easy it just makes a bigger version of what these are so on this one this one makes bicorn and then this one makes barrel and this just regular ball beads so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reduce this um log down and i'm not going to worry about the colors twisting or anything like that so <coughs> i'm going to get a varied amount of each color on each of the beads now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to try and play around and try and find the right amount of the clay that i need to make one of the beads i think we'll go with the um barrel beads first because uh, i like one of those and you can just twist your clay as you're reducing it down <coughs> so, <coughs> so I'll just take a little bit off first to start with and as you can see it's just got a bit of all the uh, colours going on in there and then just pop it inside your bead roller and then the slot on top of each other and then try not to press too hard and I'm just rolling it backwards and forwards and then we've got a perfect barrel bead now you could always try and <coughs> twist it a little bit more so just pinch it on either side and just twist a little bit looks a bit like uh, rock that you get at the seaside and then I'll just pop it back in there and then just get it back into shape again if you want it any more twisted just keep doing that until you've got it exactly how you want so in there and then we've got a perfect little barrel bead now just take this Scrap that down and we'll see we get if this is the right amount for making the ball beads. I think it'll be a little bit too much for this. So you want to push down a little bit, but not too hard. That'll be just about right actually. Now you'll know that it's the right amount when you can get your runners completely down. So as you can see it's come all the way down in the little notch. And just slowly do backwards and forwards and you get a perfect little ball bead. Now you could also put that into that and back up a little bit more because the bicon one is quite pointed. So I'm putting that in there. <coughs> and again, just rolling backwards and forwards. there you've got a little bicorn bead <coughs> so I'm going to take this off camera now and I'm going to do uh, barrel beads I think with the rest of this once I've got them done I'll come back and I'll show you what's next right I said that I'd uh, show you the scraps that I'm going to be adding to my tray as I add them as I'm going along with the video uh, this one this pile does just a few off cuts and that's from doing a paradox cane I'll uh, see if I can find the link to the video. It's not completely finished yet, but these are the ones I'm going to be cutting off and uh, putting away to use in the video. And this one is from Patchwork Cane that uh, hopefully by the time you've seen this one, uh, the other one will be out and you'll be able to see what I've made. And it'll be this one here. So uh, those are just the extras. So now I'm wanting to uh, just go over quickly how to do uh, Natasha beads. So I think I'll I use a little bit of this. I'll put the uh, paradox one over here because this is all still all uh, nice and soft, pretty much. So as you can see, it's quite bright and uh, colourful. This uh, cane. I'm just going to chop it up a little bit more. And I'm just going to squeeze it all back together in a different way. So I'll just get my acrylic block. Sorry for the noise. And all you want to do is just squish out all the air and make it into a block. And 
just keep going at each side until you feel that it's one solid piece. Okay, so I think we're just about there. So you just want to take your blade. Now, depending on how big you want your uh, Natasha beads to be, is whether if you reduce this down or whether if you keep it at the size that it is. So I'm just going to give it another squeeze, make them a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm going to cut it down the middle, get the blade the right way. And then I'm going to take each of these pieces. to cut it down the centre again and then when I open it up we're going to get a pattern. Now I'm not so keen on this uh, big patch of blue here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop some of that off and I'll add that back into the pile. So that is going to be one of my uh, Natasha's. It's a fairly uh, simple pattern that one. But I'm just going to put it on its side and I'm just going to uh, trim off a bit of the excess because one side's a bit thicker than the other one. Let's see how this other one came out. Oh, that one's got a bit more of a pattern than uh, the other one, I think. And you just match them up so you get a pattern that way. And again, whenever I make the tests, I always tend to get one side that's thick and the other one. I don't know why it ends up uh, being like that, but it's probably just how I uh, cut them. Okay, so I've got, we'll go with this one. So I'll pop it on here. And where's, oh, there we go. So I'm just going to take my um, old gift card that's in some paper and I'm going to just push these sides together. I think I'm going to make it into more of a a point at either end or yeah I'm just gonna round them off having it on the acrylic block sort of just helps you to keep it in place if you press it down hard enough so you can move it around for you to do this sort of thing now this is quite thick for what I'm wanting because I'll probably bead around this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim a little bit off from there and then that can go back on the pile. Oh, and you've not got that added weight and you've got some more clay to work with. So yeah, in as close as we can go. So I'm just going to take my plastic like what we used for the other ones and I'm just going to blend together the join within the centre and go around the edges and smooth them out just make sure that you've got everything joined up perfectly and this way if you this way you don't have to sand your pieces down because it will be completely smooth you can, if you haven't got any of these plastic pieces you can use um, paper but you just can't see as well of what you're doing. Um, you could also use out of cereal packets, you could use those. Um, or if you buy a greetings card, they generally come in these plastic baggy things. Um, what else could you use? Um, I'm trying to think now. Or you could use some baking parchment if you've got some of that. Or wax paper, you could use that as well. Anything that's sort of semi translucent would uh, be a good thing for you to use. I'm just going to reshape it round and every time I do this I just go back over with my plastic and I just blend it together. Now as you can see there's more red on this side than there is of this one. Here on this side it's just slightly more than the other one so I want to try and even that up and I'm just going to take my uh, tissue blade I'm just going to bend it slightly and just takes them away from it. That way it evens it up. And then just rub it a 
again and just get it nice and smooth. You, didn't, you don't have to keep it as one big piece, you could break it down into smaller pieces. But I wanted this as a long pendant, I think. I think that's probably what I'll do with it. So it'll be something that coordinates what I, the beads that I make that goes with the cane that I've actually made. So that's the idea of all these scrap things that I'm showing you what I do with my leftover pieces. It's simply making them all stick clear and making pieces that will coordinate with other ones that you make. If you're making jewellery like what I will be doing, then having coordinating pieces just brings all the pieces of a, you know, the different parts of a piece of jewellery together and you're not having to go out shopping and buying different things because they all work, match together. Now some canes that you get, you can there might be just colours that you can mix together just to make a different colour clear back up. So let's see, like this one. Be off the tray. So this one, if you mix that one back up, it'd probably make a lovely green, which I might do that with that because there's not all that too much of that left. And I've got a purple one that's very similar. So probably some of the scraps I will turn back into just another colour of clay. Or when you roll them out on the pasta machine, you can get such a marbling effect. So that's another thing that we can do. But anyway, back to the uh, Natasha. So I managed to get the join out of the centre. Now I probably will put some rhinestones in this or something before I bake it. But I've got it nice and smooth and I've got it how I want it to be. Now I can either bead around this or uh, I can mount it in some more clay glaze it there's lots of different things that you can do with these so I'm going to make a few more of these um, with the rest of this cane and some other beads and I'll come back and show you the next thing right so now I'm going to have a go at uh, making a type of cane with just my scraps <coughs> excuse me I've already done some off screen so I'll be able to show you the rest of them once we've done this but I'm just taking some lumps of uh, scraps from off the tray and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge them into just one big log so you're just squeezing all the air out you don't need to chop them up any more than what they already are if you want to you can do but you don't need to what we're trying to do is we're trying to just get different coloured sections within uh, our log what we're going to do is we're going to roll it out and create a thin long strip for us to uh, create our cane. Okay, so that's so what I've done. So now it's going to go through the pasta machine. Got the right setting. So you just want to obviously thin it out before you try putting it through <laughs> your pasta machine or you might break it. You can do this without a pasta machine but it just makes it a lot easier. So as you can see, rolling it out, we've got our three different sections here of colour. Okay, so I'm going to run that through. So that's what we've got. I know it looks unsightly at the moment, but don't worry, it's going to look beautiful when we're done. And I'm just taking it down one more setting on the plastic machine. Okay, so I've got my, sorry, wrong way, <laughs> one strip here. So what we're going to do is we need to try and keep these in the same size sections. So if you want to try and sort of square off um, your pieces. So we're not using this for the cane, so you can save that for something else. Okay. 
there we go. So I've got that nice and squared off. Don't worry about these tiny little holes, they'll be getting squished while we're doing the cane. And then what we want to do is, whoop, I've just taken a solid colour, something that is going to be a real contrast to the colours that are already in uh, our sheet. I'm just going to lay it on top. And this is a thinner uh, layer because this is sort of going to become the veins of the cane, what we're doing. So just try and get it on as uh, evenly as you can. Sorry about the squeaking. There we go. So now what we're going to do, I'm just going to lift it off and then I'm going to lay it out so that it's in line with the markings on my tray, well, tray on the board. Just to make it easier for cutting this up. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to cut these down to uh, an in one inch section, I think. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stack these on top of each other. So you want to keep the same section on top of the other section. So if we take up the next one, I'll loosen them all off, it'd be easy. So I'll leave that one to the last because it's a bit thinner than the other ones. We're just going to lay it on top of each other. And once I've got them all laid out, will show you the effect from the side. This one up. Okay, as you can see, you've got the uh, bright pink that I've done uh, as the darker separation, and then you've got your three different sections of your colour. So, oh, I don't know, you can see. Just uh, zoom in out so you can see. Now, what we're needing to do now is we need to. to oops, sorry, I've come off needing to get these to the closer together so I'm just pushing on the sides now I like the veins if they go a little wonky don't have to be perfectly straight if they bother you just probably don't go a little bit slower than what I'm doing now Try and straighten it out just by pushing on the sides. And if you've got an acrylic block, just give it a give it a squish. Technical term, give it a squish. see now the colours are coming closer together. Now the reason I did the pink on a thinner setting because the colours that are on the inside reduce less than what the colours on the outside do. 
Right, so the next point is deciding on which side you want to be on the centre of your kit <coughs> or what would be the middle depending on what you're doing because these are two different uh, canes that I've already made now as you can see this one's not got a centre in it this one has so this is a flower and this is just a fancy pattern cane I don't know the name for it but you're basically uh, creating this sort of petal shape to start with so with this one it was a different type of slab that I used um, but this one's probably the uh, best one to show you so as you can see I used four different colours on this one and I decided I wanted this to be the point of the petal and this to be the outer side now you could go the other way around so what we're going to do is we're just going to decide what we want as the middle so I think I'll keep this lighter one as the middle and then I'm going to just sort of start rocking on the end that I want to be on the outside and then just keep pinching the point which is going to be you know the point of your uh, petal So I'm just going to carry on doing this and once I've reduced it down so it's more this shape but longer I shall come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Right so I've got it um, reduced and uh, stretched out and I've got it over 10 inches. <coughs> Reason being is because I want to show you two different ways uh, that you can put this together. So I'm just going to have a little cut off the end just to strengthen it a little bit. Am I messing save this? Something else. And as you can see, we've got our petal gate in there. And it's just got the slight variation of colour and then the, the pink veins in it. So I'm going to... <coughs> now, you can keep a section of it that's just like this, or like your petal. So I'm going to do that. <coughs> going for that. So I'm just going to cut it off into one inch sections. The other option is that you could actually cover it with a uh, single you know, coloured piece of clay, which is what I did with these ones. Just went round each of the, round the whole thing with the gold before I cut it up. But I just want to show you what it's like without the wrap round it. There we go. Right, so this is going to be the piece that I'm saving just as a, an embellishment to, type of cane. So I'm going to take four to start with and I'm going to try and sort of flatten off the back side so it's more of a triangle rather than just a petal. And then once you've got your uh, fork hands done, you just want to press down on this pointed part, so just along here. And then what we're going to do is, I'm just going to make sure that they're, they're all facing the right way. And then the coloured clay that you've put on this side marries up to a side that's not got it on. Again, that are four pieces. Try and make sure that they all line up together. And I'm going to give them a little squish and then just flip it over and just make sure that they're all going the same. I'm going to push that in like that. And there you can see we've got a lovely pattern going on. 
Now, first time I ever saw a can like this, it looked like an eyeball. So, I had to have a go at it because I thought that was quite a fun idea. And then you can use that however you wish. Right, so that's, so that's two cans just from there. Because you, then you've got your, your normal petal cane that you can do for embellishing. And then we're going to <coughs> do the six piece version now. Which is more like a, a flower. So again, make sure that your pink side is matching up to a side that's not got it on. Now if you wanted to make it a a full flower cane then you can put a centre into it. It can either be one of these that's got variegated colours in it or it can just be a single block colour. So that is up to you. So I'm just getting them so that they're all the same way. together, flip it over there we go. and then same as the other one just push it in so make sure you've got all the air out of it now you can wrap it with uh, coloured clay now if you wish which I probably will do, but I'll do that off uh, camera. And just give it a little roll every you know, couple of squeezes, it just sort of evens it out. There we go. So I'll cut off a piece of that. So we've got another can. So they're just ever so slightly different. So this one's got the Four sides, so you could keep that as a square if you wanted. So it can be either round or squared, or it's up to you, or you can squish it and make a triangle. Or this one's more of the um, six sided, um, which is like what I've done with this one here, but you could also turn it into a flower cane, as I've already said. So with just those, you've got one, two, three, four, yeah, four different types of cane. <laughs> Now <laughs> we're adding up, then we're going off, isn't it? Um, so yeah, just from doing that one technique, you can get four different types of canes. So, right, so I've decided that I'm going to split this um, video into two videos because there's uh, quite a lot to going on, and I know you'll get bored to tears having it all in one uh, video to watch. So this is just a selection of some of the things that I've made already from uh, my scrap tray. So you can see I've got some canes, I've got lentils, I've got. Uh, cabochons, uh, I've got Natasha beads, lots of different things. Uh, I've still got a lot of uh, uh, things that I want to uh, show you on the second video. But I'm just going to push these over to the side so that I can show you what I've got left. So as you can see, I've still got a lot to go. So it might end up being three videos if I can't get through all this lot. So I shall be back with another uh, video just uh, showing you different techniques that I use for things uh, to use. So if you've got any questions pop them in the uh, uh, comments uh, section and I'll ask, answer them as best I can. And uh, if you like the video if you could give me a thumbs up that would be appreciated. And if you've not subscribed if you consider subscribing that would be appreciated too. So thanks for watching I'll see you next time. Bye.